Our next speaker is a UK-based freelance data visualization specialist. You may know him from visualizingdata.com, which has been a staple in data visualization since 2010. Uh, and it's grown to become a popular source of information for many, many practitioners. Uh, he's been a freelance professional uh, since 2011, focusing on providing data visualization, consultancy, and training services. And he's taken on quite the challenge for this conference. So uh, please help me welcome Andy Kirk. <laughs> Thank you, Irene. Thank you, everyone, for coming back after the break. Um, so I'm British, just to get that out of the way, straight away. Um, and over the years, I've learned two main things about speaking at conferences. Um, always make sure that the topic you choose strikes a chord with people. And always avoid using gimmicks and superfluous presentation devices. So that's, that's the main thing that I want to really get out there. Shame with another. Design per niente. Design Nietzsche. Jara. Représenter le rien. God. Het ontwerp van niets. Tarahia Tohi. The design of nothing. Projectare nulla. The design of nothing. Design of inyet. Hmm. Design for me. Design para o nada? Cornute! Hé? Eh? Quoi? Le de design de rien? Ben voyons donc. El diseño de la nada. Pero que me estás contando, Andy Kirk? The design of what? Did we really accept this? The design of nothing? Really? I don't know, Andy. Well, speaking of tough crowds, um, Something that I'm really uh, kind of, uh, and we all are naturally, we're drawn to gaps and exceptions and things that don't kind of fit in with the rest. And this is a great photograph um, from many years ago, the defiance of August Landmesser, the single person in the audience who's not saluting. He's there with, with his arms folded. And so it's in the sense of design and visualization, there's wonderful opp opportunities from nothing, from not doing things, from the absence of magnitude and things. And when we see nothingness, we're kind of intrigued by what that means. And this is a, a front page from the International New York Times from um, a few couple of weeks ago. And that big gap, the kind of data darkness that that gap shows on the left of the Pakistan version of the International New York Times, it kind of reveals a, a very powerful story about censorship. And the for visualization designers, the task of handling and presenting and representing zeros and nulls and blanks is it's a very fiddly challenge. It's a very annoying and frustrating process. This is a project to visualize measurements of car speeds in the Netherlands by Eric. I won't attempt the surname. But Eric. Let's call him Eric B. Um, and what we've got here is a number of things all in one very kind of finely balanced display. We've got zero speeds in black. We've got when there are no, no cars on the road, in that kind of empty grey area. But also we've got these big chunks of the failure of the sensors to capture the data. You're in the same grey, and we can only judge that absence of sensor data based on the fact that we expect data to be there. So it's a very, it's a very diff difficult balance in that to, to fine tune the representation of things that are absent and not there in terms of magnitude. So the, the four things I want to talk to you briefly about this afternoon are really the nulls, the absence of data, the zeros in our data and how we represent things that are zero in size, the use of blank and nothingness in design, and also finally, just some invisible concepts around this issue of nothingness. So first of all, null. And um, has anyone in the room got this t-shirt? Null Island? Oh, there's one or two. Um, hopefully you've got the receipts, that's, that's fine. Um, so when nothing becomes something, when we deal with data, as we, as we all do in this room, um, we're often handling gaps in our data. We're often trying to find ways to, to kind of fill all those gaps and make sure we've got a kind of perfect data set. And it's very easy to get frustrated and kind of down about any gaps that do exist. But we should embrace the gaps. We should see it as an opportunity to switch and pivot the focus on the absence of data. What does this mean? What does, what does it mean about the, the absence of measurement devices or the absence of transparency? I often deal with a lot of clients who work with survey data. 
And they always articulate to me this frustration for those um, data points where there are no responses. But once again, I see that as an opportunity to learn about why are there no responses. Is it a measurement failure? Is it a lack of engagement with the question, a lack of understanding of the question? There's so much richness in that no response that we can utilize and exploit. And we live in an age of um, information overload, as we, as we all know. And so we're not used to no information. We're not used to no data. Um, unless you're CNN trying to find hours and hours of coverage of this mission aeroplane, you know, we're not used to the absence of data, and it's something that was mentioned on the BBC um, in their coverage, that we kind of, we, the first week or so when that plane was just anywhere in the world, it was very uneasy because we're not used to this in this generation. But sometimes the absence of data is very, very interesting. The, the Bloomberg visuals that you see there, the billionaires, the absence of faces to me is kind of fascinating about these hidden billionaires, the people we don't know the faces of, just as interesting as those that we do see the faces. This project by Mitchell Whitelaw in Australia to visualise the metadata of Australian prints and printmaking. The bottom row I highlighted in yellow there is the, is the no data, the no metadata, and the, the, the lack of thumbnails also reveals something quite useful about the, you know, the, the, the great distances that they have to go yet to kind of capture all this data about printmaking and prints in, in Australia. This project from the South China Morning Post, looking at the weather patterns over 70, 80 years, there's a big chunk missing there, where no data was recorded during the war years. And it's such a striking pattern. It's actually the most, in many respects, the most interesting insight from that graphic. This project from Periscopic, the state of the polar bear. There's a big area on that, pro on that project where there is data deficiency. And as you see in the quote there, they use this almost as a, as a political statement to try and get Russia to reveal, to share, and to release the data that they have about the polar bear. So whilst in some respects it might be kind of frustrating that we don't have all the, the whole picture, we can utilize it to our ad advantage. And this idea of data darkness is something that is in this age of information overload, is, is becoming more and more prominent through its absence. This project looks at um, some data about um, kind of industries and the contribution of jobs in different, parts of, um, in, in different parts of the west of the states. And there's a big chunk at the bottom of that stat bar chart, which is no data, no re revealed data. And this is the government who are keeping these details back because it's about industries or jobs that they don't want to reveal the details of. And that is so fascinating. And the big chunk that that represents in itself is, is kind of revealing. And of course, the techniques of showing and representing no data is, is, is kind of tricky. I mean, that uses kind of a soft pastel color. This project from the New York Times uses a kind of a, a texture hashtag to, once again, to show and give the same em emphasis of lack of data, data not available, as it does to the, the color shading of the choropleth map. But sometimes that doesn't quite work out. And this attempt by the BBC to show where it's legal to be gay, we've got very, very similar shade of grey for no data and homosexual acts are legal. And it's not different enough for our eyes to be able to see which is just the map and which is actually an important category of the data. So when it comes to the absence of data, to the nulls in our projects, I think this quote from Jay Thorpe, which um, he shared recently, I think is very important. One of the first questions we should be asking about any data set is, what's missing? What have we got and what does that re reveal? What can we draw legitimately from, in, from that data set in terms of interpretations? And what can we learn from the gaps? On zeros, we're talking about the challenge of something to represent nothing. How do we give physical form to the absence of amounts, the absence of magnitude? Often, the judgment of zeros, it requires local context or local knowledge. The fact that we all know Central Park is in the middle of New York means it's far easier to, to explain that big rectangular gap in the census map of New York. This picture that um, Rob shared, Rob Simmons shared on, on Twitter, reveals Mount Etna. But you kind of need to know that that exists on the island to know that that is a significant gap, a significant circle of, of space and emptiness. John Snow, you may have heard of him. Um, the context, the knowledge of this project is that the, the gaps in terms of the lack of deaths in that particular rectangle were the brewery. 
And in the brewery, the workers there drank the beer rather than the water, so they were kind of fine. They didn't get the cholera, and it's a pretty striking gap in, in the data. I'll just, uh, just do some quick administration just to tick that off my uh, to-do list. Um, <coughs> The absence of data is also revealing in terms of, in this plot, to look at the kind of pyramid display of human age. The gaps in the data there reveal the, the longevity or the, the ceiling of our lifespan. This project is not actually associated with the finding, but the Red Cross during Hurricane Sandy were using the absence of social media data to reveal where people were struggling. Um, as I've so many times in my training courses, people have got better things to tweet about than, wow, this water's really rising. My building's collapsing on top of me. <laughs> so um, so that, while that, whilst that project isn't the direct uh, source, it kind of gives you the idea. We can look at the absence of data, the zeros. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate that the agency who did that project were called floating sheep. But anyway, so how might we encode zero? How might we give form to, to no magnitude? Well, running through the, the kind of classic repertoire of different marks and visual properties, we've got quite a few options to work with. The position along an axis of a, of a mark or a circle or a hollow circle, we can see the zero-ness of that mark along the axis. Bar charts are a little bit more tricky. This is an interesting project. You probably won't be able to see the details. It's a very um, kind of low-res image, but this is the, um, the uniform distribution. So all the different sports, the number of players playing that sport who have where, or where that number on the back. And the number 42 is absent. Um, I know nothing about baseball, but I understand that this is the retirement of the number 42 jersey for Jackie Robinson. But that only exists because we've got the space, the blank, the empty, achieved from having 42 still included on the x-axis. And I just want to make sure at this point that we all know the importance of having zero baseline. Because we, you know, we really should not allow this to happen. I mean, this is one of the very very best worst graphics I've ever seen in my life. The, the decimalization of the uh, y-axis is just, a, just pure joy, given that the values are 18 or 19. But, <coughs> <coughs> but, th but there we go. The position, or the, uh, the position along an axis and also the, the area for an area chart, the, the striking, I, mean, I don't think many of these values actually reach zero, but the striking absence of data there is achieved through still including on the x-axis those timelines, those dates, to give it a home, to give zero a home. On things like parallel coordinates, or by extension in the line charts, it's kind of still valid to represent zero. But the difficulty on this, as um, those of you familiar with parallel coordinates will know that the leftmost of those two marks is actually representing null. And so it's kind of misleading. It also shows the same height, the same position for zero. So that's a very tricky thing to try and pull off. When it comes to color shading, once again, the main thing and the main theme about representing zero is we need to have a home to see the absence. So in this color scheme, it goes from zero to, uh, I think it's about 70 plus. But the white is the zero. So all those gaps are legitimate zeros. In this project, looking at the uh, unemployment rate across the states. The first band is, begins from zero, but it's not white because actually you would not expect any part of the US to have zero unemployment rate. So it doesn't start from white to not imply the fact that there is, in some respects, a zero state. This work by The Guardian US, the gay rights um, analysis across the states of the US, there's some interesting use of texture there to show where laws are um, prohibited or banned in terms of homosexuality. So that's a nice way to differentiate from also the absence of any law or a kind of a lack of clarity. And we also see the use of density. So this is um, work by Interactive Things to look at the, um, the Fukushima outbreak and the, the top leftmost there just has a single trace, a single dot. And it's not pure zero, but once again, the idea that we give a frame, we give a, a home in a grid to the presence of zero is a nice and effective device. And likewise, on the wind map, I don't expect there are many places on the wind map that is zero wind, but where they are, it does still have a home. The coordinate of the map and that black area still allow you to see the zero. This next project, I think, came out this week, but it's a nice 
Flip, it kind of shows where people don't live. The fact that despite a population of 310 million, 47% of the land of the US is unoccupied. So that's a really nice way to show zero. When it comes to things like networks, core diagrams, this is a project from Jan Willem Tulk for Scientific American, looking at the interactions between different um, entities in a hospital between patients and physicians and nurses. There are obviously plenty of interesting insights, but to me, once again, the kind of contrarian view is that there are two or three dots on that perimeter that show that there are no interactions. There are people just operating in isolation or receiving no care and treatment during the given sample period. Not everything does work. <laughs> so when we've got the, um, the judgment of angle, we, we can't see zero degrees. When it comes to using area of circles, now this is very small, but Newey and St. Helena are pretty much zero, and yet the graphic still includes a very small circle to give them a home. So that's kind of um, fraudulent. That's probably a strong word. Um, we'll, we'll scrap that from the, uh, from the recording. But it shows you that with area, we still have to show something, or we have to eliminate it. For tree maps, obviously, in the uh, stock exchange there it will always be a value. But for that same approach, it will never show those components that have a zero state. And so for these type of encodings, we have to think alternative approaches. Use of annotations, use of a separate call out to say that there are also these zeros included, which feels kind of disappointing because it's just a label of value and we're not, I mean, we're not able to encode it. But still, that seems to be one of the only options we've got in many respects. Moving on to blank. So this is about when we're trying to use nothing to represent something. And this is a great quote from a book by Alex White. The single most overlooked element in visual design is emptiness. But space must be used deliberately. Um, there's a kind of interesting website, which I'm sure very few of you have been to, called thispageintentionallyleftblank.com. And this is a place where they kind of recreate that idea that you used to have in books, where there's a place for holder for blank. And as you can see there in the quote, the primary reason is to offer Internet Wander is a place of quietness and simplicity on the overcrowded World Wide Web. So in a sense, what we're talking about here is almost like visual punctuation marks. The ability to kind of allow us to, allow us to breathe and have a little space and time. And the most elegant infographics out there from the likes of the mastery of Jonathan Corum and this project from Simon Scar, you know, they embrace emptiness, they embrace blank to give us that kind of that sense of a paragraph break, of a comma, of a full stop. They allow it to breathe and live. And it's almost like the courage of empty, the courage of an editor to say, we will give you this real estate and we won't care if you do use blank. We, we won't care that we're losing the potential to use that as advertising revenue. So it's, it's, it is quite a courageous statement. And Kennedy showed this before, but what I love about this is, now we haul it, trashy infographics that involve endless scrolling, but I love the fact that this embraces it to show the depth and the fact that you've got plenty of thousands of feet of nothingness. The, the sense of scale and the sense of the journey to the bottom of the sea is really kind of captured and portrayed through this project. And we could wait all day for the bottom, but we'll skip on. This is a graphic from the independent newspaper from a number of years ago, but that striking emptiness of the countries that did not back the immediate ceasefire. It's so, so striking and so effective editorially. And there are many similar examples, the Nigeria um, polio cases, the, the, the gap on the right just shows how much progress has been made. And then it stands Nigeria out, the, it shines a light on the exception. This was a graphic that caused a lot of stir um, on, the, um, on the World Wide Web um, a couple of months ago. From Reuters, this is looking at the kind of glass ceiling that persists for, for women at the executive level. And a lot of discussion was made about how it, it didn't quite capture this, the ceiling. And so the, the remake from Francis on the right there shows the height of, against, you know, essentially the, the optimum level of 50%, which then reveals just how far that ceiling is away from the actual. And the utilisation of blank space is something that we can, we can exploit. This graphic from... Uh, Christina Shucks from a few years ago now, but 
the beauty of this is that it kind of exploits the space of the absence of data above to show that very striking shape of the profitability of Avatar. Rather than trying to fit that into a scale or having to use the dreaded log scale, it fits it into the space above and utilizes the empty space. The kind of, um, the kind of bravado of this work from Accurat to go diagonal, to utilize the space of, of a diagonal real estate. I've never seen that before. But, I mean, it's very Italian, isn't it? But it's something that's you know, quite striking and kind of courageous. And obviously, a lot of this is going back to the origins of Gestalt from, I think it was 1912, and the, the different understanding about how we perceive shape and relationships between shape and nothingness. And the famous FedEx um, arrow that's kind of embedded and hidden within that uh, logo. And the same can be utilized in visualization or information design. So this, once again, that you put this op-ed from the New York Times, I'm sure some of you have seen from um, a couple of weeks ago. The print version's on the left, and actually the, the uh, web version on the right is actually that idea of kind of the, the disappearance into thin air of the, uh, of the play, which is very, very striking. I'm kind of reluctant to move on the slide, but I will do anyway, because this is something that <laughs> dominated the agenda uh, last week and created me all sorts of nightmares, because it was lambast. I mean, the whole might of the World Wide Web were pounding on this poor lady who created this graphic. She lied, she lied, she should be hung, drawn, and quartered. And she just said, no, I tried something, didn't work, sorry. But the, you know, the flaw of this, it wasn't deception, it wasn't lying, it wasn't some agenda by Reuters. It was a, just a, an attempt to copy the one we, we saw before. Simon, who works with Christine, probably two or three desks away, is an influence, and you can see that she's tried that kind of dribbling, for blood of fed, but the use of the axis on the bottom creates that sense of an enclosure, which makes it look like it's a white area chart rather than red. So it's just, a, it's just a, an unfortunate byproduct of a, a slight mistake. And then just to finish off with, the invisible. A bit more thinking about nothingness. So just a few random themes of nothingness. I mean, this is a, actually an advertising uh, from a, a couple of years ago, but there's something so kind of intriguing about this. It's about the, the idea that uh, a good book's hard to put down. It kind of also suggests that not many people are reading, um, <laughs> or that that person's got a very powerful Kindle light. Um, <laughs> But you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a really kind of intriguing, and it's in its nothingness. It doesn't tell you what to think. It kind of invites you to think itself. Um, and we should, you know, at least quote one said with Tufty, I'm afraid. But the best design is invisible. The viewer should not see your design. They should only see your content. Uh, and I think Mike this morning talked about Dieter Rams. Good design is as little design as possible. And it's the same idea. And this is a, um, a beautiful graphic. I'm not sure. I think Louis might be in the audience. But this is a beautiful piece of work where the, the design is almost invisible. There are no clicks required. It's just hover and move. And the, the friction between your curiosities about the subject, there's no obstacles to that. You just move around and you explore it. It's a very invisible design piece. This quote from, I'll just go with the name Antoine for now. I won't attempt the surname at this stage of the day. But you know you've achieved perfection in design when there's nothing more, sorry, not when there's nothing more to add, but when there's nothing more to take away. And once again, the most elegant infographics, there's nothing superfluous, there's nothing redundant or remaining. It's all there, and it's all serving a purpose. Another quote from Fernando Viegas and Martin Wattenberg, the clearest, most precise graphic in the world communicates nothing if nobody looks at it. And Jen was talking in her presentation about the fact that Scientific American is not required reading, so there's a, there's a requirement sometimes to to seduce people, to convince people to look at something. Otherwise, no one will see it. No one will see the insights. But conversely, far too often we see things where there is nothing to take away. Um, and you know, this is, well, it's quite a stinker, unfortunately, but there you go. And lastly, sometimes there are points where we reveal that people know precisely nothing. Where in the world is the Ukraine? I'm sorry, America, but there's a little bit of a problem here. <laughs> so just to leave with for the uh, end of this talk, pay attention to nothing, care for nothing, because it really is worth something. <laughs>